What's up, Team AOB? Here's a fun fact about me. I'm not only a bowling coach, but I'm a trained chef. Not only can I show you how to bowl, but I can fix you a nice bowl of bouillabaisse. In the culinary business, there's a saying we use before we start cooking. A French term, mise en place. In English, it means everything in place. So, in the spirit of mise en place, today we're going to discuss what we should do to get the most out of that short practice time before league night starts, and how mise en place will do that next on The Art of Bowling. Hi, I'm certified executive chef and bowling coach Arthur O'Connor, and thanks for watching The Art of Bowling channel, where we discuss tips, tricks, and techniques to help you bowl your best. I appreciate you spending a few minutes of your time with us to talk about the sport we all love. So we've all been there, right? It's league night and we're about to get practice started before we move on to competition. And before you even know it, Attention League, your practice time is now over. Drop your balls. <laughs> What's going on here? Practice is over already? More than not, we start game one wishing we had more practice time. We usually get between 5 and 15 minutes of practice before we bowl. Let me know in your comments how much time your center gives to you. I see a lot of league bowlers who are unsure of what to do during that practice session. They don't have everything in place. Some of them aren't even there for the practice session. This critical few minutes can either get you in the groove for the night or have you staring at the ceiling all night wondering where it all went wrong. So how can we apply mise en place when it comes to our practice time? Well, here's how I handle it. First, respect the time. There's not much time to practice, so appreciate that fact by getting to your center early. Before practice starts, I get to the center at least 15 minutes early. This allows me to gather my things and settle down. We all have seen the leaguers who waste precious minutes of practice time trying to squeeze into their bowling shoes. Lucky for me, I get to slip into my custom made penny loafer bowling shoes. Before the start of practice, I check the tape in my thumb hole, looking for peeling or loose tape and address any issues I may come across. I also make sure all of my equipment is clean and ready to go. Okay, now I'm ready for practice. Mise en place. With my first two shots, I stand at the line to practice my release, making sure it feels right and that my thumb is getting out quickly. The next check is my arm swing, making sure it's straight. To do that, I use a full approach and slide on the 16th board, hitting the 10th board at the dots, the arrows, and the range finders. I do this twice. Then I practice my corners, 10 pin, 7 pin, until I'm comfortable that I will make them all. With that, I'm ready to find a line with the goal of a perfect night. If any time is left to spare, I will work on opening up my line a little bit. I'll either burn up the outside with a 500 grit ball to create a little more bounce, or I'll throw plastic up 15 to create a little more hold room. If you're feeling devilish, try throwing a urethane ball at the seven pin over the 25th board to mess with the lefties. And there you have it, my recipe for practice success, which starts with getting my stuff together before league play. If you apply mise en place to your league play practice, I'm confident that you'll find more success with your game and get more fun out of it as well. Let me know what you do for your practice play by leaving a comment below. I'd love to hear your take on it. Thanks for watching and see you on the lanes. Hi, I'm USBC Silver Certified Coach Arthur O'Connor. Thanks for watching and see you on the lanes.